So YouTubers, Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone and our search for the 22 substitute load is reaching a conclusion. And it's a good thing too because after that experience at Dick Sporting Goods, the 22 shortage has not improved enough for us to be happy and so the 22 substitute load is even more important to find. So far, here's what we have. The 22 substitute load should be a 38 special. Now the reason why that's important is because that happens to also be the most popular caliber for cowboy action shooting and they shoot a lot. Now, it should be a cast lead bullet and it should be light to simulate 22 performance. So the two lightest bullets we have is the Lee 105 grain semi wad cutter and the Lee 95 grain round nose flat point. So this would tend to have us favor the 95 grain Lee round nose flat point over the 105 grain semi wad cutter. Now this actually weighs 99 grains. This actually weighs 112 grains. And they're cast out of plain range scrap so they have a little hardness to them. So YouTubers we have the caliber and we have the bullet. Now the next criteria for our 22 substitute load is that it must be a good shooting load and that means clean, reliable, safe. Also it means that we want a load that has some velocity to it so it's kind of like a 22. If we could get it around 1050, 1100 feet per second, that would be ideal. A good shooting load. Now the third criteria is accuracy. 22s are pretty accurate rounds and a 22 substitute must also be accurate. So that's the third criteria and we're testing for that. The fourth consideration is the economy because the load cannot be expensive. 22s by their sheer nature are inexpensive to shoot and almost call it cheap to shoot. And that's one of the problems that we're having with 22 today is that if we find it, it's not cheap. It's not inexpensive. And that violates the whole idea of 22 in the first place. Turns out that we can load these for about a nickel a shot. And that's like five dollars a hundred and there's no 22 today that can touch that. So we are on good ground with the economy. Fifth criteria is that it must be fun. Fun means low recoil, fairly low noise and that's why we want the light bullet. So if we can get high velocity with a light bullet and yet still have low recoil, then we're, we're good with that criteria of fun. Then the last criteria, number six, is that it must be suitable for hunting, especially small game to even medium small game up to say coyote size, short range coyote. Well, this will fill the bill because this bullet, being 38 caliber and 100 grains or 99 grains, will hit small game like 20 millimeter cannon shells hitting deer. So that is going to be fine for hunting. And in fact, even against coyote, short range coyote, we are in the game. So YouTubers, let's go with 5.2 promo and 5.6 promo. We'll take the 5.2 promo to the range first, test for accuracy and all the other criteria, and then see if the 5.6 will work. There are lightweights with 5.2 grains of promo, and let's see how well these shoot. We'll go with the single action revolver, the Ruger flat top 357 Magnum, it's the small frame, small grip frame model. Shooting at 12 and a half yards.
We have five shots in one and a half inches and one thrown high. Now checking the primer signs, 5.2 grains of promo, we could easily go to 5.5. With the Ruger Blackhawk flat top, put five shots in less than an inch and then threw one out. So you'll see that these are fired cases back from the range having been shot in the Ruger flat top Blackhawk and the cases show signs of fouling blowback which means that the case is not obturating completely. So the pressures are still low enough that we can use more powder. Notice that when we wipe those cases we're getting powder residue. Now I could stop at 5.2 grains of promo for this sweet spot load since the accuracy is fine in both handgun and rifle, but we'll go ahead and add a little more powder to 5.6 promo just to see how that performs and we'll run a chronograph at that time also. But we'll keep in mind the original goal of this project and that was to create a 22 substitute round. No need to magnemize this bullet. Light 99 grain Lee round nose flat point bullet 22 substitute. You you have it here. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not in a hurry to cycle it because I'm going to under semi autos. Oh, <laughs> but you want to get a balance point with your elbow down to where. Now cycle it to the trigger is chart. Make sure it's run the slide back, run it forward. Okay, it's empty. Just now get the pistol grip on it like that and then turn it off. Put your finger on the trigger, watch the sights, and you press the trigger. See if the dot stays on the orange. Okay, good now. Run it back and forth. Now take your hand off the slide and bring it back to the point balance. When you get ready, relax your muscle tip to see if the gun stays. Gently touch the trigger. That's your dry fire practice. Now, if it's not consistent, press the elbow a couple times till you get the trigger work done. But everything I do at a thousand yards, you got to do here. You got to hold the gun back smoothly. You your thumb not do this. If the thumb's down here like this, but can't you hold it here? Is that a okay? Oh, sure. Okay. Shot it. Okay. If you, I mean, if you need speed, you got to go to the front. You guys get them shortened. So here you're bench resting. You're trying to build the skill of holding the sight. The best you can put your hand out there. But the sight, you want to rest and be And when you're doing it like that with the elbow down, when you're holding the gun, relax like this, see if the gun stays put. Then press the trigger. Now, sure, you can't do that in live fire, but if you do that, you'll be able to hit the train man. Uh, you'll notice the obturation is a lot better. There isn't anywhere near as much powder fouling by the case, so it's sealing better. And you'll notice the primers are looking yeah, like black, more normal a primer appearance, not yeah. too low a pressure. Just about right. So it looks like the 5.6 <laughs> promo is not a bad way to go. Uh, that's a 12 gauge going off. Let you see that obturation again. It's a lot better. It only goes down maybe a third of the way or even less, 25% of the way down the case, only on one side. So it's sealing a lot better. Well, there's the accuracy of that load. About an inch offhand at 12 and a half yards, translates out to two inches at 25. Average of velocity of 1177 feet per second out of a four and five eighth inch barrel at 12 and a half yards, actually the muzzle velocity. YouTubers, 1177 feet per second average for five shots out of a four and five eighth inch barrel is actually pretty impressive. Now out of our rifle barrel, we're gonna get somewhere around 1350 feet per second, which puts this in the exact positioning that we want in performance, in velocity, in recoil, in fun. We've got our 22 substitute. Good shooting to you all and we'll see you next video. Bye for now.